So now we'll move to, I think, the more interesting application of a mass spec, and that is applied to molecules where we're looking at the fragmentation patterns. So three spectra in question four, ABC, which are three isomers of hexane, so C6H14 in all the cases, hexane 2,2-dimethylbutane 2,3-dimethylbutane. So start off in the spectrum of hexane, which is spectrum A, assign the peaks at 29, 43, 57, 71, and 86. So let's see where they are. There's 29, there's 43, there's 57, 71, and 86. Well, our molecule, hexane c 6 H14 has a molar mass of 86. So obviously that's this one here. So that's the molecular iron there, M+. Don't see it all the time. When you do see it, it's rather nice. Now, all we're doing here is we're now just successively cutting these bonds to get these different heights, okay? So the first thing is let's chop off the end there. Well, the end is a CH3, which is worth 15. We take 86 and subtract 15 from it, we get 71. So the first peak is C5H11 plus, okay? Now let's take a, another peak, but instead of just taking one carbon, we'll take two carbons. So that's C2H5, which is worth 29. And so remove that, we get C4H9, which has a mass of 57 right there. Another gap, 57 to 43 of 14, that's another CH2. And so now we're just splitting it in half. We get C3H7, splitting it right there. And so that has a height of 43. And then finally, 29, well, 29 is C2H5, or putting this split here and looking at what's right there. Mass of 29. You might also possibly see the 15, that little blip right there. However, CH3s are really, really, really horribly unstable. And so you really don't see them very often in mass spectra, despite what a lot of the A-level questions would give you. Anyway, these numbers, 29, 43, 57, 71, um, are really, really important numbers for you to be able to recognize. They're not exclusively these hydrocarbon fragments. For example, if you have a CHO fragment, that also weighs 29, but it's very, very helpful to you to recognize, hey, if I got 57 there, it could well be a C4H9 fragment. If I got 43, it could well be a C3H7 fragment and so on. And I'll be casting back to that idea several times as we go through these questions. One last point to notice is all of these, of course, are based upon um, all of the carbons being carbon 12, 1% of carbons are carbon 13. So when you have a big high peak here, then you can sometimes see the C13 peak, essentially where one of the carbons in there is a C13, so one division higher. So instead of 86, it'd be 87. Instead of 57, it would be 58. Instead of 43, it'd be 44. And you can kind of see the one at 30 and the one at 72. Okay, so now we're moving to spectrum B of 2,2-dimethylbutane, and we're looking at the peak of 71. Of course, there is 2,2-dimethylbutane. Now, remember what we said 71 was? It is C5H11, okay? In other words, what we've done is we've removed 15 from the main peak, and 15 is, of course, a CH3. So a CH3 being lost. Now, we could lose a CH3 if we break it there, but look, if we break it there, or well, the equivalent of that would be breaking it there, okay? Now, what we're left with is the plus there on a tertiary carbon, okay? So that's a tertiary carbocation, which is very, very, very stable. When we look just at hexane, which was the equivalent of breaking it there, that would just given us a primary carbocation, not overly special at all. Tertiary carbocations, though, super duper stable. Therefore, if you can make a tertiary carbocation by fragmenting a molecule, you should expect to see a nice significant peak associated with it. We'll point out again, however, there's 29, remember that, that's C2H5. There's 43, that's the C3H7. And there's 57, that's the C4H9. So again, we see some nice significant patterns associated with those alkyl hydrocarbon fragments. 
And now to 3-dimethylbutane, peak at 57 is the base peak in spectra A and B, but hardly present in C. OK, there it is there, just a teeny little blip in its existence. Why? Well, mass of 57, remember, is C4H9. So when we think about the hexane, we lose C2H5 to get down to 57. So we can split it there. So that's the bit that goes and there's the C4H9 left. When we look at the 2,2-dimethylbutane, lose cut there so that we're losing a C2H5 to give us the C4H9 and we get this that nice tertiary carbocation okay so therefore quite easy to see how we lose the C2H5 to get C4H9 in spectrum C though we're looking at the 2,3 dimethylbutane okay find a C2H5 group that you can lose and the thing is there isn't one there's no single C2 H5 fragment possible. Okay, so very big difference in structures. You've got a C2H5 here, a C2H5 here. No C2H5 can be lost there. Thus, this fragment at 57, very, very small.